Hi, good morning. We've actually got some crochet and here it is. Now you can see we've got a little line, little tail there. And yes, he's a chocolate orange colour. Thought it was about time I start thinking about this because time is going so fast. People are going to want to start thinking about gifts and Christmas and things. Yeah, I know we're not summer yet, but yes, people are thinking Christmas. Especially if people do make a lot of these items for charity or they've got big family, things like that. They do like to get started. So this is our little lion and this is what we're going to make. So we're going to go top down. Don't forget it's in UK terms, just in case you need a converter. There are some on Google or some of the magazines do have them in as well. I'm quite pleased with them. I think he looks quite cute. So let's go top down and make our little lion. So here we go with our little lion, obviously hiding our chocolate orange. And of course, as we know, they don't have to have chocolate oranges in them. They can have anything. And they do stand quite nicely anyway without the orange. So you could just have them on the side, just covering over something. So I'll pop him back on the orange for a minute. Now we're using a double knit yarn. Now this is Stylecraft yarn I'm using, but as long as you're consistent with your yarn, you're usually okay. But you can get different thicknesses in yarn. So do have to watch that. Now these are three colours that I've used because I've used a slightly lighter one for his little muzzle there but you could use all the same color you could change your colors it's entirely up to you that side but it's just that it is a double knit yarn now the actual crochet hook is a 3.5 millimeters there we go we can see that's a little bit better there um now i know there are different crochet hooks so you may need a conversion if yours isn't in a millimeters and also you may need a conversion if you're not used to using uk terms because that is what i'm going to use and i know it does cause some uh, confusion i know some people have sort of said to me oh that's the wrong stitch you're not using that but it does just purely come down to where you come from in the uk that is our terminology i'm using but I know it is different, particularly in the US, so it is something to keep an eye on. Uh, they're just my needles, so we don't really need to look at them. A pair of scissors. A few little bits and pieces here. I have some sewing cotton because I've used buttons for his eyes, little tiny buttons. You could use beads. Please remember who the recipient of this, if it's a gift, is going to be, though, because you don't want to put anything on that might come off. So you might want to embroider your details. I've used a very tiny bit of stuffing in his head where i've sewn his head on so that's just that you could get away with stuffing it with wool if you haven't got any of this stuffing um this here a little bit this is actually four ply yarn you could use an embroidery thread you can get away with double knit and it's just that it's just a little tiny sort of detail on there and that's just so i can sew my buttons on as i've said so we have some colors here now i've used this one for the body i am really hoping i'm not going to run out of this because i don't seem to have a lot so the one we're doing now might end up being part this color and part one of the darker ones i suppose i could blend that one in quite nicely so we'll just see how that goes we'll play it by ear but this is the one i am going to start with and because i've already turned it into a ball i'm hoping it's not going to roll off i'm just having a look i do have a yarn ball here it is full of other little bits but it might just hold my yarn so it's not so i don't want to take the other things out it's got this little curly bit here that you're supposed to tuck your yarn around no it's not going to stay but it might just stop it running off the table if nothing else so here we go we're going to start with our slip knot like all our crochet starts with and we're going to pop it onto the hook, but not too tight. Don't over tighten it because then it makes your stitches harder. We're going to start with just two chain, one and two. And into this very first chain, I'm going to do six double crochets. In fact, that makes it dark, doesn't it? Let's move it over there. Um, so it's still to sit. Look at that. It's creating quite a shadow. Is that the yarn? There we go. I'll move it all out of the way. We need a nice bit of light there. So into this first one, I want six double crochets, UK double crochets, remember. I know in the US this is a single crochet, but it's a double crochet over here. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, and six. Right, we're not going to join anything there. We're going to carry on round with another round, but I'm going to jump to half trebles. Now, with this, it does look a little bit funny when you do the first stitch, but if you want to make sure you're starting in the right stitch, count from the back. One, two, three, four, five. That is actually my stitch here. Okay, now it's yarn round if it's a half treble. 
we go into our stitch making sure you're picking up both pieces there we go in we have three on the hook and then we pull it through all three that is a half treble but we're going to do another half treble in that space as well so yarn round into the same stitch pull it through pull it through all three so that is the first stitch of this round first two stitches we're now going to continue to do two half trebles in each of the remaining five so we will end up with 12 stitches so off we go so that's two in our second one two in number three two in number four two in number five and our last one two half trebles in number six so now we do have 12 stitches i'm just going to pull that up a little bit so I don't want a little hole there so I've pulled that tight now so we have 12 now I need a lot more than 12 obviously we're now going to go for 24 so again same stitch two half trebles in every single one of those 12 so we count 12 stitches but two in each one okay so that's our first one with two our second one Number three with two. Number four with two. Number five. Number six. So we're halfway around. We've got six more to do with two in each. Number seven. Number eight. Number nine, number ten, there's two more to go, number eleven, and our last one, number twelve, so two and number twelve. So now we should have, if you want to double check at this point, you can give it a little count, we should have 24 stitches. Now I'm just having a quick look at my pattern which is over here. I just wanted to confirm how much more I increased. Right, we're going to continue with half trebles, but the next one we're going to do two half trebles in the first one, one half treble in the second. A two, a one, a two and one all the way around. So here we go and you will do that 12 times and it will give us 36 stitches. So two in our first one. So that's one and two, one in the next one. That is one set and we need 12. So this is our second set. Second set with a two, second set with a one. Third set with a two, and then a one. Fourth set, a two, And a one. Set number five. Two. And a one. Set number six, which means we're halfway round. A two. And a one. Set number seven. Two. And one. Set number eight. Two and one. Set number nine. Almost there. That's a two and a one. Set ten. Two and one. We've only got two more sets to do. Set eleven. And set 12 so we just alternated two in one one in one so it gives us a 12 increase so we should end up with 36 stitches and I just spotted something that I do need 
I need a stitch marker and also I could do with a pen. I always do that, don't I? I always forget my pen. So I'm just going to pause a second. It's not going to make any difference to you guys. It just pauses me for the video. Right, I'm back with a pen and with a stitch marker. I've got a little pussycat one. I don't have a lion one, um, but pussycat's the nearest we're going to get. Now, you don't have to have a stitch marker if you're counting your rounds. You can do that way. But because obviously I talk as well, it's easier to have the stitch marker in. So I'm going to place the stitch marker where I did that last stitch there. OK, so we're going to now be doing eight rounds of one half treble in every single stitch. Now, I'm actually going to take Lion out. We'll pop him there because I'm going to measure on here in a few minutes because it's always best to check your measurements on here because Again, different size candies, depending on what you're using. Um, also, different size yarns, even though they all say they're double knit, they can vary. And also tension issues. So it's always best to keep checking that it's going to fit your item. It's the same with any crochet, really. Um, I think probably garments are the hardest one, as in people garments, because it can fluctuate. I know that myself. I think that's why I've really never made anything for myself to fit. Although I am trying to do a granny square cardigan at the moment. We'll see how that goes. Probably get bored halfway through knowing me. Right, so one half treble into every single one of those 36 stitches. And I'm just using the stitch marker as my marker. So yarn round, remember? And it pulls through all three. Pulls through all three. So it's just a one in every single stitch. And we're going to have eight rounds. I recommend when you get to about seven, though, you definitely have to measure it on your sort of object. So I say it might not be a chocolate orange you're doing. You could pop this over. You can get like the clear balls um, that you can put gifts in, like sort of like Christmas decoration type ones. Now, that's really cool to put a gift in. And then you could just put your little cover over it. I know people have talked about sort of rolling up a pair of socks, uh, preferably a new pair. And that makes quite a cute gift as well. Or, it, like I say, it just stands there. It could just be a basic cover for something. I don't know, a candle. Weird shape for a candle. But you can get little squat candles um, or something. Even if it's in a box, it doesn't matter if it's not 100% round, does it? Um, bath bombs. That is one a lot of people have talked about, which is a perfect one to do because you can get bath bombs of approximately that size. The only thing with a bath bomb, quite often, say if you went somewhere like Lush and bought one, um, they're, they're loose, so obviously it's powdery. So you might want to sort of wrap some cling film or something like that around it before you put the cover over. But yeah, a bath bomb would be a great one, wouldn't it, as a treat? So here we go. I'm still on round one here. It's already starting to curl, which is good. We want it to curl. The only thing is it gets a bit of a pain when it first curls. It takes a couple of rounds before it doesn't uh, sort of get in your way and curl in the wrong direction. Right, we're almost round to the pussycat marker here. Couple more stitches, I think. Yep. And one more. And I'm going to mark it down because I forget where I am. Hence why I always need a pen. So, round one. And you see it's curling, so just, just push it round the other way. But you can see how it's going to start fitting over the orange by doing that. So, off we go again. Round two. Of our little chocolate orange cover. Or chocolate cosy. I never know what to call it. I know in the book um, they wanted the term chocolate cosy. So that's what we went with. I, mean, I think it's quite a sweet term. The only thing is I am finding people are going, well, what's a chocolate cosy? So <laughs> I think for over here, at least in the UK, the chocolate orange cover is sort of the best description. Or when I'm hashtagging it and things like that, I put chocolate cosy and chocolate orange cover now because I think that's what most people remember it as. Up halfway around. I hope wherever you are at the moment, you're enjoying some lovely weather. It's a little bit, I know, I'm not moaning. I like the nice weather, but the nice weather doesn't like me. I can't sit out in the sun long. It starts to give me a headache and things like that. I mean, it's beautiful to look at. And I do like to sort of sit out there a little bit, try and get a little bit of vitamin D in my system. 
Um, well, yeah, I can only do so long, so I have to do it in sort of bits and bobs. I'm actually doing this video now in the morning because the aim is this afternoon I can take the crochet cardigan that I'm trying to do outside so we can uh, get some of that done. The theory was I was going to get it done for my holiday. That isn't going to happen, I don't think. I don't think I'll get it done. Although if the weather carries on like this, I won't want to wear a cardigan anyway. Oh, I can hear my pussy cat crying outside the door she goes to bed she has, she's got this little routine and so i think right fine i can get a video done let's mark that down as round number two and then i can guarantee the second i shut my craft room door because she's allowed in it normally um she starts crying outside of it so she'll probably just go and annoy my son in a minute or two All right round three we're on in fact i'm gonna move my stitch marker up it is always a good idea to move it up every now and again My wool has actually dropped on the floor now. I like having the wool in a ball. Not that I get around to doing it very often, but the problem being is it rolls about. And now it's gone onto the floor. Another reason for not letting the cat in. She's quite good. She does chase the wool sometimes. But if it's uh, rolling around on my floor, thankfully I cleaned my room yesterday, my craft room, so the floor is okay. It's not dirty. Um, but she, if she sees it rolling around, she's going to chase it. And I'll have a cat hanging off the end of it, which I really can do without. Now, she's gone quiet now. She'll have gone and annoyed my son, or she'll have just gone and laid out on the bed. She's enjoying the sun, like cats do. You can see our shape is coming along nicely now. I do like a half treble. I know I've said it before. I was going on about liking half trebles. I just think they're a nice stitch. It sort of gives you the speed without um, having to do sort of a treble, which can be a little bit holy if you're not careful. A half treble still gives you quite a stiff stitch. And as I said, these stand up. You don't want it to be a loose stitch so they'll fall over. Oh, the cat's back again. <laughs> I don't think you'll be able to hear her on the video, but she's uh, she's making a noise at me. Right, that is round. That is round number three. Should we have a look on how it's going on our orange now? So can you see how it fits? Now, it needs to be relatively snug but obviously not so tight that you can't sort of stretch it over but if at this point it's getting a bit loose you may need to look at your tension or maybe decrease a stitch or so and if you do it at this point you'll get away with it so we're going to go on to round four <laughs> i'm still laughing at the cat um she's determined to get in i might let her come in in a second actually because she she likes to lie on the windowsill in here because the sun uh i get full on the front of the house which is where i am at the moment we'll see how she goes if she goes quiet i'll leave her And we're quiet again now, so she might be all right. We'll see what happens. Right, so what did I say I was on? I'm on round number four. I'm halfway round number four. Where heart means we're halfway finished. The body. I mean, obviously, the body is the biggest part to do. Um, so it does take that little bit longer. Uh, the main on this one takes a little bit longer as well. But it's, it's simple enough. I'm sure you'll find it easy enough. <laughs> oh, she's back. Right, I'm gonna get, I'll get to the end of this round. If she's still doing it, I'm going to pause it and let her into the craft room, I think. Because she's sounding very badly done by. she's answering me as well as i'm speaking i think she thinks i'm speaking to somebody i think that's the problem so she thinks there's somebody here um so she wants to come in and have a nosy right we're gonna pause there i'm gonna write down that i've done that round and let her certainly 
Right, I'm back with the cat in the room now. Let's see if she behaves or if she starts sort of pestering me. I've picked the, book, uh, the wool off the floor, though. You might occasionally see a shadow now, like you can see a shadow there, feet are there. Right, round number five. And now she's determined to stand it in my light. What are you doing? Go and sit down. Ah, she's just seen a bird fly past the window. And now she's going to have a look what it's doing. Right, so round number five of one half treble into every stitch. This video is going to be in so many pieces that I'm going to have to put together because I have to keep that I've been stopping and starting, haven't I? I know some of you won't have actually stayed with me while I've done this. You'll have just paused it, done your X amount, or the ones that are doing that won't have heard me say that. Um, but yeah, it's eight rounds, but make sure you do keep checking on your orange to make sure you've got a fit there. Oh, I do need to start thinking properly about gift things. I know I've said about, I've started this because I'm thinking, oh, you know, obviously people have started thinking about Christmas gifts and things already. Um, but yeah, I do need to start thinking about it. Every year I say I'll do like a Christmas in July sort of patterns um, and July comes and goes and yeah, life seems to be moving very fast at the moment. Ta-da! We are round, and that is round five. Should we have a look again on the orange? It should be coming together nicely. Yeah, that's doing good. So we want three more rounds. Now, will I get it out of this wall? The thing is, his little face is in this as well. Hate it. I don't know how you feel. You know, you get towards the end of a ball, and you know you've got to finish something. Um, and you don't want to have to buy another ball or something like that. And it's like, will it do it? Will it do it? I. <laughs> I'm not convinced looking at it that it is going to do it um, but uh, the other colour I've got even though I did deliberately do the muzzle in a different colour to try and sort of give it a little bit more sort of 3D um, I would get away with swapping onto the other yarn but this is 6 isn't it so 6 I think I might do it I might do it we will see So halfway round round six. <laughs> She's just sat staring at it, wonder at the minute. few more to finish six and then we only have two more rounds and I haven't got a clue how long it's taken because every time I've paused it well it stops it um it sort of continues with another time so they're all going to be in separate little time slots right that is round six done round seven If any of you do make this, um, don't forget if you pop it on Instagram or anything like that to tag me. I do like to see it. Or if you don't want to sort of tag it that way, you can always send me a message on... Oh, the ball's fallen on the floor and she's seen it. Um, you can always sort of put me a little message on my Octopudding Facebook page on the Messenger bit, something like that. Because I do like to see what people have done. Um, because then it means that what I did was worth doing, you know, sort of... Uh, so I've sort of made somebody happy with the pattern that I've created and that's a nice feeling but yeah otherwise if it's Instagram or something like that you can always sort of uh, tag me the only thing is with Instagram I think it's my fault but I think people get I've got a little bit confused because I've done smart doll because uh, I couldn't get the name I wanted it's smart doll underscore octopudding if I remember right like the links are there anyway if you have a look at um and so people go, oh, octopudding, and pop stuff on that, you know, tag me on there. And I don't always see it because it's my smart doll one. 
and I don't go on that one as often. I don't have not done as much smart doll stuff as I should be doing, to be honest. But my other one, I put everything on. You know, it could be a flower I've got, or it could be some crochet I've got, or a doll I've got, and that's just my name, Sarah Scales. Um, so as far as Instagram's concerned, if it's crochet and not smart doll, I'll probably more likely to see it on the Sarah Scales one. But it doesn't matter. I do check both of them every now and again. Because I do like to make sure I answer somebody if they put something on, you know, or check them out or sort of say, you know, if I like their colour choices and things like that. I like, I like to put something. I like to be part of it. So one more round. I will pop all my links in below anyway. It's, I know I've got, what have I got on there? I've got two Instagrams, my Facebook um, and there is a Twitter one, but to be honest, I don't really go on it that often. It's there for occasionally to put things on, but uh, it's not a page I do too much with. Right, so this is the last round of half trebles. I said it was the last round originally, didn't I? It's not because after we've done this round, I am going to check it on the orange and make sure I'm happy with it. And then I'm going to do one more round of double crochet. So it's going to go back to a double crochet. The reason being is the double crochet is a tighter stitch and it just very slightly pulls it in under the orange a little bit. So it makes that last bit a little bit harder, which is good if it's holding something. Now the cat, I can't see her. She's very quiet and my wool is under my table. But this is the wool that is about to uh, run out. So hopefully she's just, most of the time she'll just sit there and stare at it. She's just fascinated watching the yarn moving. It's, it's not often she really does grab it. Every now and again she has done. That's probably only if I've been sort of playing with her with it. But uh, she's probably just sat there underneath staring at this yarn. Right, we have... Stitches and it did it, it did it, it did it. Right, so let's have a look. So, can you see I'm sort of 90% at the bottom of my orange? So, I'm going to do one more round of just a double crochet and it just, just tightens it up. Can you see how it sort of pulls in very slightly? Um, not enough to sort of make the shape much different, but just enough to sort of tighten it. So off we go. Last round for the body. Well, says me as I promptly split my stitches. There we go. Uh, is one double crochet into each stitch. And so she's very quiet, which is very suspicious. But at least I'm pleased I've got... The body at least of the line and we might even get the face we will see there we go I could have took the stitch marker actually out now because it's tapping on the table which is annoying There. I was just doing a little yarn there. I was trying not to yawn and <laughs> speak. I was sort of like trying to hold it back. I made a bit of a funny noise, I think. Just a few more stitches. So you can tell yourself when you've got round when you've changed your stitches anyway. And I'm going to do a slip stitch as my last stitch. Now, if I pull that a bit towards me, that's naughty. I have to really struggle to sort of force myself forward on the camera because I like to sort of work away from my body when I'm on the camera, whereas normally I work a little bit close to myself. Right, so I've just cut that off. I'm holding on to that because I don't want somebody to be running off with it. So that is our body of our lion. So we're just going to double check for now, obviously you need to sew your ends in, but uh, for now I'm just going to stuff them in there and pop it over. So look, we're going to have a nice 
nice cozy fit for our chocolate orange i mean i've said about all things you could put in it if you want to be healthy you could actually put an orange in it or an apple or something like that make great end of year teacher gifts things like that so that's the body of our lion we're now going to move on to its little face and let's have a look oh <laughs> she is under there she's nearly got it she's just staring at it now and i think by looking how much i've got i'm going to get the face out of it as well so the face starts I'm just trying to, I'm just looking whether to pick it up. I'm going to pick it up because she's going to get it. Otherwise, I'm not having it. Nice try. Oh, she's walked off now. <laughs> so we're going to start the same as we started with the body with two chain and six double crochets into that first one because it's essentially amigurumi. Even when we move on to the half trebles, it's amigurumi. So it's one, two, Three, four, five, and six. Now, for the face, I'm going to stay with double crochet. So, the next one is going to be two double crochets into each of those six to give us our 12. Now, if you obviously i've just said the term amigurumi not everybody knows what that means basically the crochet is in like a spiral format so there's no sort of stop starting or anything like that and it makes it smoother i think so that's one two three four five and six and so now we've got 12 stitches still not enough for the little face so we've got to do it again so two in each again to give us our 24 so that's two in number one two in number two number three number four number five number six that's halfway around remember i'm doing two in each and i'm only counting one number but i am doing two stitches in each one and two in number seven number eight number nine ten eleven and 12 so we have 24 stitches there i'm now going to do another round but it's just going to be i'm just turning my page over because i've got two pages here it's going to be one double crochet into each of those 24 we don't need a stitch marker for that we'll just count 24 stitches shall we so we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen we're nearly there seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty just four more stitches bit of fluff there we don't want that 21 22 23 and 24 so that is the base part of his face now the main is added on from now so i'm just going to literally fasten that off i'm double checking what i have written there uh yes i know what i'm doing <laughs> I did change it a couple of times. In fact, I'm going to do a slip stitch there. So I like it a little bit smoother. But that is optional. That is totally optional, that slip stitch. So fasten off because I don't want that to come undone now. And then we're going to bring in this gorgeous orangey sort of brownie. I don't know what it is. It's just gorgeous. It's a lovely colour. Um, I've used it for pumpkins and oh, so many different things. I just think it's a really nice colour. And that is what obviously I've done his mane in. But you could carry on with the same colour. You could do it a redder colour. You could use all sorts. Because if you look at a lion, it's sort of, 
I suppose more of a brown really but I wanted it to stand out so that's why I've gone for it. Time for the main and time for this gorgeous yarn here it's sort of like a reddy orange colour. Now I've already done this one once and I made a bodge. I know I like you to see warts and all but not warts and all if it's going to confuse you as into what you're doing so I thought it was best to just stop and clarify it a little bit so this is the face and with this first round we are only working in our front loop now you can see i've already done it once so that's why it's sort of a bit lumpy but you can see there's two parts yeah there's two parts to your stitch i only want this front part okay we're gonna grab our yarn we're gonna pull it through i'm gonna do a chain and then i'm also gonna do a double crochet into that stitch just to anchor it so i just tighten it up there two chain miss a stitch front loop double crochet two chain miss a stitch front loop double crochet yeah so one two front loop double crochet so we're missing a stitch in between every time one two miss a stitch front loop double crochet two chain miss one front loop and i was trying to do a treble there i think I think this is where I went wrong before um, because I'm doing so many trebles at the moment with this cardigan I'm making. I just want to keep slipping into doing trebles and I've got to stop it. Two chain, miss one, front loop, double crochet. One, two, miss one, front loop, double crochet. I think you've probably got the gist of what I'm doing now. So it's two and then into a double crochet. Two, miss one double crochet all in the front loop that's the main thing you need to keep saying to yourself front loop front loop which is what i wasn't saying originally that's why i had to stop as well as getting trebles in there for some bizarre reason one two miss one let me double check that miss one it's that one into yep it's hard sometimes to pick up that front loop so just persevere with that two chain and then I'm just going to slip stitch into my first stitch. So as you can see, basically what I've done is I've made like a little two chain space all the way around. And that is for us to actually pop these popcorn mains in here. So we'll pop that down a minute. And I'm going to just slip stitch into the first chain space. And now we're going to actually be working in double trebles so as i said double trebles now it's not a stitch i use that often i did try it with trebles but it just was not long enough for the actual main so i'm going to do four chain that counts as our first double treble now a double treble goes round and round so it goes round twice a treble goes round once a double treble goes round twice we're going to go into our space we're going to pull it through it should give us four on the hook here yeah? so then we pull through two like you would with the treble you pull through two and you pull through two you just got an extra stage that's all so yarn twice into the space we pull it through one two and three so that's giving us three stitches i need five so remember that four chains counted as a stitch so that's our fourth and that's our fifth okay so i'm now going to just give that a bit of a long loop while i take my hook out now because it's a popcorn stitch i'm going to go in the top of that four chain i'm going to pick up the loop i'm going to pull it through the chain and i'm going to do a chain that anchors it into place i then want two more chain okay now that was our first one that is why it had to start with a chain and then four double trebles from now on we can work in just five double trebles into each space so yarn round twice that's our first one yarn round twice as i'm trying to say to myself twice 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 not just once it's not a treble so that's two when you get into them they're all right there's just a longer stitch so it feels a little bit weird if you're used to doing trebles so that's through four and number five we're going to take it out now on a pattern it will tell you to go into the top of this three chain 
this three chain, this four chain, should I say. But you can actually get away with just going in there. It's It doesn't make a huge difference at this point. It can with some patterns, but we're going to just do that. So one chain anchors it, then one, two, gives us our space into the next one. Five double trebles. One. Two. Three. Four. Now last one in there. Five. Take it out. Either top of the four, up top of the uh, first one, or in the space. Entirely up to you. It depends on how precise you want to be. One, two, three. It is three. Cause remember, number one anchors it. The other two give you your space. So double treble round. One, two, three, four, and five. Take it out into the space, pick it up, pull it through, one chain to join it, one, two chain to go to the next one. In we go. Double treble, remember, double treble. I nearly did a treble again. That's one, two, three, four, and five. Pick it out, join them together. One, two, and three into our next one. That's one, two double troubles, three double troubles, four double troubles, and five double troubles. Take it out, pick it up. Pull it through, chain join, one, two. I mean, it's up to you. You can just remember it as when you pick them up, do three chain onto the next one. Or you think one chain to join it, two chain for the space. Next one. I think we're about halfway. I didn't count then. I was about to count. I didn't. What have I got? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. Keep looking in the camera now. I'm sure it's... I seem to have gone closer. I don't think I've knocked it. I've got it hanging off a shelf now. Uh, and I know I stopped started it because I had to take care of my phone off the stand. But I feel like my crochet is a lot... You know, you're closer to it, so to speak. So I hope that looks all right. In we go. Grab it through. Pull it. One chain join. One, two. Now, don't worry. Can you see how it feels like it's pulling round? Don't worry about that. It will be all right. I'll show you why when we get to the end. So we've got one, two, three, four, and five. Join it together. One chain join, two chain space. Nearly missed one then as well. To keep an eye on. I've got my oh my yarn's all tangled now. What was it doing there? I was about to just say, just keep an eye on where your spaces are. <laughs> Don't want to miss one. One. Two. Three, four, I'm sure this is taking longer than the body, five, take it out, join it in, pull it through, join, one, two. These are just called five treble popcorns, well, five double treble popcorns. 
because a popcorn can be of a variety of stitches sometimes I've done three sometimes I've done four but because I felt this needed a little bit more weight to it that's why I've done five stitches in the actual popcorn that's three four and five one two so we've got two more to go one two three four and five join it together one join two chain into our last one we have one two three four five grab it pull it through one to join two to space and then we need to just sort of slip stitch into the back now you can remember where we joined it together and you can sort of see there that is what we're doing we're just slip stitching into that stitch there now i'm going to just do that a second and i'm going to fasten off because i know you'll be worrying now that it's curving round and i'll show you it's not really a worry because it does curve round but what well, I've always found that between popcorn and certain stitches, you just need to give them a little stretch. And sometimes you'll hear them actually pop as well. Which is weird, that one just popped. That popped. You might have actually heard that one. I don't usually hear it. So it's just a case of giving it a little stretch because otherwise it's just going to curve itself around naturally. I mean, you do want it to come around a little bit because my son was laughing because with this one, I like I just went like that. And he says, oh, it looks like he's got a little turtleneck on um, because it needs to sort of round around his neck. So it does need a bit of a curve. Now, I'm also going to check something here. I want to know how many I've got. So I'm holding that there. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So we've got twelve. Now, you'll also be thinking, oh, there's a lot of big gaps there. Again, that's because we went into the front, not in the full stitch. But don't worry, it does sort of blend in after a while. Now, the reason we went into that front stitch, I'll show you now. So if I do push it that way. So you can see the other side because we went in the front ridge you can see it's left us can you see this ridge it's left us of the back part of that first stitch and it's that back part now we're going to pick up Ooh, dare i risk that bit that's the risk bit i've got left of that color we're going to pick up using this and i'm just double checking what i did where am i Yes, I did. Right, so using this, I thought I'd have to use the other one if I run out. I'm going to be picking up these stitches in double crochets. But I'm going to do two in one, one in one, two, one, two, one, all the way around. So let's have a go at this. Are we ready? Now, so you've got your work facing you. You've turned your mane inside out and we're going for our just double crochet. So I want two in this first one. And one in our second one. We have a two. So I just wanted to increase it a little bit. So it's going to go. Because it's going to be crocheted onto this bit. We've got a one. We've got a two. We've got a one. Now I know you might be wondering what that is. I'm just crocheting in the, uh, the sort of tail that it starts with. You don't have to do that. Was that a one? It was. Um, it's just that sometimes it's easier than sewing in. Just make sure you do really crochet it in a long way before you cut it off, though. I nearly dropped my stitch. This camera is way too close, isn't it? I'm sure it is. I don't know why I've dropped it. I didn't actually really move it much, but it has dropped. I hope it is going to be okay when I look at it. Otherwise, I'm going to have to start it again. Right, that was a two. That's a one. 
distracting me now because I'm looking at the camera. That's a two. And that's a one. That's a two. And that's a one. Right, I'm actually going to, like I said, this was the tail that I am actually crocheting in. So I'm going to get rid of that now because I've done it like well halfway, so it should be fine. I suppose in a perfect world, you should sew all your ends in and it makes it much easier to see, doesn't it? How much neater when you're working on it. So that was a one. So we need a two. We need a one. We need a two. We need a one. Two. One. Two. One. Two, one, that leaves us two stitches, which is good, so I need a two, and I need a one, and what I'm going to do now is just one double crochet round, just one double crochet into every single one of those stitches, now the normal stitches, it's just in the full stitch, we're not front, we're not back, we're just into the stitch. Look at that tiny bit of yarn I've got left. It has done it though, it has done it. Sometimes it's amazing, especially when you do roll it into a ball, how much there is actually there of the yarn. Thankfully it was enough to do his body and it's been enough to do his little face. It's not going to leave much more light, but it has done it. I really thought I'd got more of this yarn, so I went to have a look and there isn't there. It's bizarre. I've got loads of wool, like I'm sure we all have, and you've never got the colour that you want when you go to look for it, have you? Almost there. Should have put a stitch marker in really, but you can actually sort of feel where it is when it's like this. And I'm going to go two more, one and two, and slip stitch. Ta-da! And that's what it's left. So we did okay, we did all right. And I'm gonna fasten it off. Right, now that, this bit here is the bit that where we sew it on around this onto the body. And then when we push the main back, it sits over it so it covers it. So it does make sense. It looks a bit weird when you're first doing it. Right, I'm going to pull this one in. This is the last bit of crochet. We've just got the muzzle and it couldn't be any quicker or any easier. Uh, if you've done all the rest, this is the easy bit onto the hook would be a good idea to have the right end of the hook we're gonna do our two chain and we're going to do six double crochet you guessed it into the first one so one two three four five and six and obviously that's not if you can see the muzzle on there that's not quite big enough for his muzzle so now you're going to do two double crochet into each of those six, so we get our 12. That's our one, and that's our two. And that was annoying, there was a knot in the yarn, but we're going to get away with it. That is three, four, five. And six so we have 12 stitches there we're now going to do one double crochet in each so we can just count 12 for that one so that's an easy one 
or not as I drop the stitch. I should not speak soon, should I? I always do that. I always go, oh, we're at the end, or this is the easy bit, and then it promptly goes wrong. So that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11 and 12 and finished with the slip stitch just to keep it smooth right leave enough yarn to sew it onto the face that was something i didn't say for that bit but yeah it's always nice to sort of leave a long sort of tail of yarn if you're having to sew it onto an area i mean you can always join yarn but you know it's neater if you can do it this way and less for you to sew in i must pull in that nice and tight and that is his little muzzle now, as I mentioned before, there's no more crochet now, so I'm going to put that hook to one side. I'm going to find myself a decent needle. That one will do. And all we're going to do is do his little facial features. Now, I did this before I sewed this onto the body because then you don't have to worry too much about knots and things like that because it's on the inside. So here we go. This is my four ply black yarn. I want to make a nice big knot in it because I don't want it coming through because obviously coming through yarn is very, quite easy. And we've got our little face and I'm just going to go from there to the middle. This one looks like it's going to have a cuter face and mouth than the other one. And then to one side, to the middle. To the other side, approximately equal. Back to the middle. That was it. That's all I did for it, sort of for the little sort of mouth area. And I think that works great. And again, because we're doing it before we've sewn it on, we can sort of just neaten it up, make sure it's nice and secure, sort of knot it round a bit. And also, if there's a bit of extra yarn, it just sort of pads it out anyway. So we can just cut that off. That's not doing any harm there. Now, we have two pieces of thread here, which is annoying for us sewing on. So the first one, which is the centre point one, I'm going to sew in. Because the outer one is what I'm going to use to sew onto the face. Downside, I like to use... A really sort of pointy needle for yarn they're usually a lot chunkier than this a yarn needle but it means that your actual eye is always smaller so to get double knit through sometimes you do have a bit of a fight and we've done it right so all i'm going to do is stitch this center one in so i don't want it going anywhere we don't want it coming undone otherwise so you get a little hole in his face which is not good poor little lion right so i've stitched that in a little bit trim it off that's now out of the way which just leaves us with the one yarn tail here which is to sew onto our little face now i'm not going to sew all of this on for you guys because i'm sure you don't need me showing you how to sew things on but in a perfect world now get rid of all this as well the only piece you need here you can get rid of anything for the main you can sew those in and out of the way you can get rid of that one because that's where we joined. You can get rid of that one because that is just where we started. And this one is the one that you needed to have left long enough so we can sew onto the body of our lion. So what we would do next is we'll sew the little muzzle on like thus. And then again though, before we sew it onto here, We'll pop our little buttons or if we're doing our embroidery or whatever we're doing, the little buttons will be stitched wherever you feel suitable for your lion. I mean, you can make his sort of facial features different to make him look cute. And I just use normal sewing cotton and a sewing needle for that. And then one last thing that we have on our little lion is this. Ta -da! We have a little tail on him, which I can do with you now which I will do with you now, not that I can do. So basically, I have cut just three longish strips of the darker yarn. And I've probably done them too long. I've done them approximately 30 centimetres, a ruler length, something like that. So I have 
these nice three strands and now I am going to go for a chunky needle of course it makes my life easier if we have a chunky needle because I can thread all three hopefully if it behaves through at once that one doesn't want to come through yeah so you can see now I can pull them all the way through because it's different to how I normally do a plait so look so we've just got them through and from there I'm going to just choose an area or a height I can make up mind whether to do it low or higher I went that little bit higher I don't know why no real reason so I'm going to go with that one and I'm just going to pull it through not all the way because we want it like this and then divide it up into our threes and we do a little plait you do your little plait as long as you would like to do I don't think lion's tails are overly long um, I know because like I say you can end up leaving this fluff on that sort of works quite nicely so I've just gone so far I'll say that's it now I'm going to take my orange out because it's heavy and I'm basically going to tie a knot that's all it is it's just a knot in that end bit make sure I only get it up to the plait bit I don't want it to go beyond that because otherwise it looks messy so nice and tight so you can see what I've got there and then my scissors are back again trim it off and that's the tail so good that was nice it's a great way of doing plaits and hair and things like that so i can pop it back on my orange now now the only thing i'm going to comment on now is after you've sewn all your facial details onto this front bit and you are just left with the bit to sew it onto the lion now i pushed the mane out of the way to do this so i pushed it forward and then i could hold it in place to sew it on you could use a pin i mean i haven't got a pin but i'll use a needle so you could just pin it into place like that which will help as you sew around and i sewed all the way around until i left a gap of about an inch then i added a little bit of the stuffing not not even that much to be honest it was probably about that much and i added that into the face just to give it a little bit of a lift so you can see where it's stitched on so it was stitched on all the way around added a little bit of stuff in then push the mane back into place and you can see we've got a little bit of a 3d effect there now because of all that and that is it that is our little lion <laughs> definitely sew your ends in before you do it because it does make life a lot lot easier um i hope you enjoyed that i'm gonna have to now look at it also notice i pinned that there i don't think that would work i suppose you could have a tail stick into the side but yeah make sure your tail and your head are of equal distances ideally do this and then do the tail afterwards but that's our little lion i hope you liked him and um, just a little bit of fun i thought it might make a cute gift for somebody relatively simple just take a little bit of time um but the actual work itself is simple enough so we'll pop this one back on this is our finished guy isn't it and ta -da! baby lion and i will see you all very soon with another video if you've got any queries just pop a comment below uh, i try and answer as much as i can um i'm not perfect at everything i don't know everything but i will either try and find out or try and help somewhere along the line so thank you so much for watching if you do enjoy my videos don't forget to please like subscribe and share and i will see you all very soon bye bye for now